Hello, this is Coach Tim Campbell, and I'm your host for the Self Made as a Myth Make a Difference Together show, where we're talking with successful business owners about their stories of the journey to building their business. And because we know that success in business is not something that we can do on our own, we recognize the folks that came along to help us to excel. Today, I'm excited to have two fellow business owners from Florida with us today. My guests are Dr. Ben and Matt. Welcome to the show, guys. Hey, how's it going, Tim? Happy to be here. I was super grateful for the for the chance to come on and, and uh, share some share some time with you, Tim. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Well, hey, let me uh, start with having both of you uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit of your personal story, like where you were born, and uh, about your family and some of your hobbies. Yeah, sure. I, I'll I'll start. How about that? I'm Dr. Ben. I'm Dr. Ben Spears, and uh, I'm from I'm originally from Eastern Kentucky, in Pikeville, Kentucky. Um, moved to Florida for, with my with my wife and my two kids because um, she was offered her dream job here down, here down in Tampa. Um, I was a chiropractor up there for about eight years. Moved down moved down here. Got my real estate license. We'll get into that a little bit little bit more. And that's how we kind of you know Matt and I kind of met. Uh, as far as my my family, I have a, a beautiful wife Jamise. I'm so grateful for. And then you know two little boys, Marshall and Emmett, who are ten and eight years old. And you know they they are my hobby. <laughs> they, they're my second job, my hobby. <laughs> anything else that anything else that I have outside prospect membering, that that's what they are. But um, you know we we go to the golf course. You know for a hobby, we go to the golf course every single day um, as a family and and just kind of hang in, hang out and chill. Wonderful. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm I'm Matt Vi. Uh, uh, born in Tampa. Born in Tampa, Florida. Uh, moved to South Georgia. Uh, when I was uh, when I was about ten years old, uh, the youngest of six kids, uh, raised by a, raised by a single mom, and uh, and uh, you know uh, loved business from I, I don't even know what age, but just thought business was the coolest thing. Would draw little mazes on paper and sell it. And the first thing I remember selling was in like fourth grade. So I had a book and I'd draw mazes and I'd sold it to, you know two or three mazes to people for ten cents. I wish I could escape. <laughs> But um, but the uh, uh, so I've so I've always uh, always loved business. Uh, taught karate and school for uh, for a long time. Have always been in kind of those uh, those careers that allowed me to kind of work with people and, and help them kind of go to the next level. So of course, real estate was the you know the the next uh, the next best thing to do when it comes to uh, when it comes to helping people build you know not just uh, not just wealth but you know a real uh, foundation for the family. And uh, and so you know uh, got into uh, got into real estate in the late nineties. And uh, uh, purchased a, a, a company really early in my career, and then you know got it profitable and turned around and, and sold that to uh, to uh, to somebody else. Went to work for a large uh, brokerage, was a regional manager for them for about ten years, and then uh, and uh, and then you know came back to Tampa to be uh, to be close to family, and, uh, and and worked at another really large brokerage, was a regional manager for uh, for ten more years, and that's uh, that's actually where I met uh, where I met uh, Doctor Ben. And so there's a lot more to that story for, you know, as always, but, uh, but that might, maybe that'll get us started. Yeah. Well, let's, let's dig into that a little bit. Tell us about how the business came about and, you know, at what point did you guys, uh, did you know that or have the confidence that uh, you could make this work? I'll let you go first this time. We'll, yeah. we'll stagger it. Yeah, there, there we, go. we go. Awesome. <laughs> so if anybody, uh, so we have a, we have a podcast as well. If anybody listens to uh, to our podcast, it's just uh Really, really out of line that we're taking turns. Normally, what happens is Ben starts talking, and I talk over the top of him, and then he makes jokes about me talking over the top of him. <laughs> so, and, and that's kind of how it all. That's that's honestly kind of how it all got started. Uh, so, so Ben came to to work with the brokerage that uh, that that I worked at. He had a, a really good first year in, in real estate. You know, just crushed it. Did about eight million in, in volume in his first year. No sphere of influence, anything like that. And so, of course, everybody at the brokerage he was with was like, well, Ben, how are you doing that? Can you help me do it? Which he kind of started a media company at the, uh, at the same point, transitioning to help other help other agents at that point. You know, we knew we knew him. He came on uh, he came on board with uh, with with our company. And then uh, from from that point, you know, he, he and I started talking, you know, real funny story, you know, going back to the whole podcast thing. You know, uh, so he and and another broker and and another guy that uh, that he worked with pretty closely in his in his media company, you know, came in one Friday and said, "Hey, Matt, you know, you, you know, we should do a podcast." 
And I was like, man, I'm so busy. I don't have time for a podcast. Are you kidding me? Podcast is ridiculous. Nobody listens to podcasts, all that stupid stuff, right? And uh, and so, you know, uh, so he, so they all go, okay, well, you know, whatever. And so as they're walking out, Ben says, uh, I'll see you next Friday. And I'm like, you can come in all the Fridays you want. I'm not doing a podcast. <laughs> and, uh, and so the next Friday he comes in and, and, you know, they all come in and he's like, hey, do you want to, you want to do a podcast? I'm like, no, man, I'm still too busy. I'm like, right. And, uh, and then, you know, the third week he comes in and, and he goes, hey, you ready to do the podcast? And I'm like, look, I'll, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Absolutely loved it from the from the beginning. Right. I mean, the, the coolest thing is, you know, uh, you know, he likes to help people. I like to help people. You like to help people. Right. This is a great venue to be able to do that with. And uh, and, and you know, the, the fact that you can have great conversations with good people and, and they help other people. And there's so many lessons that can be learned in something. And then you can archive it and people can go back and dig into it over and over. It's just super is super helpful. So we've got to I've got to give Ben some 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 credit on, on that. He was a. Uh, uh, you know, he was the one that uh, that kind of got that uh, kind of got that going for us. So that's a, that's a little bit about how we uh, a little bit about how we met. And I'll let you know I'll let ben, I'll quit talking for a second and let Ben talk about how we actually. <laughs> yeah. So um, you know, everyone who who knows Matt um, professionally or personally, you know, knows uh, essentially he's. Uh, I'll say he's the smartest man in real estate that I've ever that I've ever met or listened to. Um, you know, there are a lot of people out there who um, we've all heard of, maybe in the real estate industry um, or outside, that that will call and ask Matt, "What's your opinion on this?" or "What's your, you know, what are your thoughts on the market?" and that kind of thing. And I was one, I was one of those, um, just not famous. And so, you know, I basically said, "Matt, man, you know, there's 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 got to be some there's got to be something we can do with all this information that you're just you know giving away, which we give away so much information, yeah, you know, still and and and." And, and just try to provide value to as many people as possible. My skill set, uh, for lack of better words, is I'm just really good at taking, you know, other people's ideas and and kind of, you know, I'll say weaponizing them, you know, uh, in, in a funny way. Uh, and and I love market and I love marketing. And so, you know, whenever I meet whenever I meet, you know, smart people, you know, my brain just starts. My brain just starts working. Says, so you know, what can we do? What can we do with this? Right. And then as soon as I bring that up, you know, Matt's like, well, here are a million different things that 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 we, that we can do for this. And you know, it was kind of just like, you know, you know, uh, one of the so here few, comes the interruption. One of the few, comes, one of the few times in my life, life <laughs> that I was like. Well, I'm, I'm really on the same page with this person, yeah. and uh, you know we, we can do something special with that. So Ben, Ben, and his uh, his partner were were putting together a course. There was a there was a really good course that was going to help uh, that was going to help agents with a little bit of what they do through his uh, through his media company. And uh, and he said, Hey Matt, do you have any information on you know some open house stuff? And I said, Yeah, yeah. Let me. Uh, and so I grab my computer and I open and I, and I plug an external drive in, and and I open up this external drive with classes and courses and things I've gathered and things I've built and stuff and all and it's it's a it's a terabyte full of just stuff <laughs> and, and Ben starts looking through it and there's folders on open houses and how to how to train on this and multiple offer classes and and just everything that would that you can imagine with it and videos that I compiled and and just stuff that I've done that in the when when something was going on in the real estate business I was like hey here's how we can here's how we can attack that and he was like why is this all sitting on this drive yeah guys and, imagine imagine like your favorite artist like a singer, you know, just has written all these songs and they've got these notebooks right by the bed. No one's ever heard of them. No one's ever heard of them, uh, you know, on a, on a, on a, on a global scale. Yeah. And, and you find them, you're reading through this and you're like, these songs are amazing. That, that's exactly what that external drive, that, that hard drive was. I was like, why why in the world are you not using using this or at least sharing this with everybody it was just so much so much <laughs> stuff mm -hmm. that he had made and built or written over decades of real estate yeah. so and and i would i would share it with people and and because my main job was business right my main job wasn't necessarily teaching or coaching that was only a portion of what i did right. it just didn't get leveraged into other people's business the way that the way that it needed to and anytime there's a problem i, I want to solve it right i just want to get to that i want to get to the bottom of it 
And so that's what that was. It was just full of a bunch of solutions. And Ben was like, well, you know, how about if we take just a little bit of this? What, what is the biggest need that, that you see with real estate brokers or agents? And I said, well, agents have a lot of resources already, right? There's a lot of great coaches out there. There's a lot of great information. There's, you know, there's what, 100, 1.3 million realtors, right? But there's 106,000 brokers, right? So, so they, the brokers just don't get the same level of attention. And the brokers are kind of expected to know what their job is. Right. Automatically, they kind of they're like, well, if I paid all this money and I stepped up and everybody's saying that other people have to come to me for answers legally, then I should know what I'm doing. And so they lean into that persona of, of thinking that they should know what they're thinking, that they should know what they're doing. And some of them are really, really, really good. They really have it figured out. And then a bunch of them have a lot of it figured out, but could use some help. And then there's some out there that are just clueless, as we as we know, that's the same with any with any business. Right. <laughs> So can and, uh, tell, us, tell us more about the business then. What do you guys do at uh, Prospect Boomerang? Yeah, cool. So, uh, so Ben, you want to dig into this? You want yeah, to... I was just, you know, you said, I, I, you know, if they've got a problem, I'll, you know, I just want to solve it. Right. It made me think, you know, you got vanilla ice oh, I see. Of, of real estate. So we're going to break it down now, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to lay the, beat, the, the, the baseline and you're going to yeah, do you right got a problem, you know, I'll solve it. <laughs> Check out why my beat there revolves it. Ice, uh, ice. <laughs> so, so Pro- Prospect Boomerang is 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 a broker profitability and growth coaching company. Um, you know, and es- essentially what we do is we work with you know bro- brokers across the country, uh, no matter what phase or stage of the business that they're in, uh, to help them really. You know, we we call it going from salesperson to CEO. So there's you know several of them who've got their broker's license to to grow this legacy business that, you know, can work with or without them. That's what we help them do. Uh, Then they found themselves, well, gosh, you know, I still need to go on listing appointments or I still need to sell or I still need to do showings and open houses and all these things, you know, to keep the, to keep the, uh, the lights on, we'll say, you know, at the beginning of their brokerage and then just couldn't, couldn't, you know, transition out of that. Of course, we help, you know, some of the largest brokerages in the country as well, uh, you know, really, really helping them basically just, um, increase their growth and profitability by getting their agents more, you know, more productive, um, as well as you know, helping them set appointments to uh, to to grow their to grow their their agent base uh, with with it within their brokerage. But it's all done uh, from a relationship standpoint, not just a number standpoint. We don't, you know, we're not a huge proponent of just you know what Matt terms smile and dial. Uh, but but specifically, you know, we're we're for we're for brokers uh, who who are entrepreneurial and you know kind of want to go from from broker to just like our podcast um, is called uh, from broker to brokerpreneur is what we call that. Yep. I love it. Hey guys, what's your um, biggest learning as uh, business owners? Yeah, so uh, so it's it's really easy to uh, know how to deliver. I mean, I think most people, whenever they get into whatever it is that they're doing from a business standpoint, they kind of know how to deliver what it is that they that their their business says it's going to deliver, right? So if you have a coaching business, you kind of know how to coach, right? If you're an electrician, you know how to plug things into a, into an electrical box, right? Everybody's kind of got that figured out. The the big thing uh, uh, for us was you know taking everything and systemizing it. So from the very beginning of the lead, you know, generating that first opportunity to make that connection from that lead all the way through fulfillment, you know, that has to be a very set process. And so that was a big part of what we, what we, you know, leaned into in the beginning because we're both business minded. So we went had a heck of a head start, but it's never perfect. Right. And so (laughs) we had to. You know, we had to dig into, okay, is this the best way to deliver this? Is this the best way to connect with the people that that, that we know are our target audience? Is this the best way to have these conversations? How do we get them signed up? How do we onboard them properly? How do we get them introduced to all the things that they have so that they're leveraging them instead of just letting them sit on a shelf? Because that was a big thing with us. We didn't want to offer anything that people just said, oh, I've got this. Let me set it aside and keep doing the same thing I was doing before. Right. We, we feel like that's a, a waste of our time and a waste of their money. And we just don't want them to do that. We'd rather not deal with those type of uh, those type of clients. We, we want people that are going to that are going to take the things that we talk about and, and be intentional and grow the business. So that means everything had to be really systemized. So I would think that was probably the biggest thing for us is getting getting everything systemized from from the beginning to uh, to you know delivery uh, and fulfillment, we'll call it in a way that we could measure it. 
So it wasn't just a matter of, did you, did you get a client this week? Yeah, that's great. We got a client this week. Did you start coaching them? Yeah, we started coaching them. Great. Are they going to the events and challenges? Yeah, they're going to the events and challenges. Wonderful. Let's do that all again. That sounds really simple and really easy, but man, there's so many steps. Because <laughs> otherwise, you, you know this, you have attrition, right? You, you end up, people fall between the cracks. They fall in the crevices of, of delivery. And then the next thing you know, you've got a bunch of different people in a bunch of different crevices and you're trying to pull them all back out and get them back on track. And if you don't have a system in place, I'm not going to just say that's hard. I'm going to say it's impossible. It's not sustainable. And so that was the first thing that we really leaned, leaned into. Yeah, completely agree. So guys, we know that business success doesn't happen in isolation. So I'd like to hear a challenge from each of your perspectives of uh, something that has come up over the years and, and a fellow business owner that uh, came alongside you and helped you through that challenge. Gotcha. Um, gosh, I, I, I mean, I could easily point at Matt every, at the answer to every, every bit of that. I'm, I'm <laughs> that. Um, but, but, but one thing that, uh, that one thing that, that really, you know, kind of challenge, you know, is the challenge was a challenge to me rather is it's easy to just want to deliver information, right? As a business owner, it is just like, here are all the things that I know. And, uh, you know, let, let, let me share all these different steps and all these different solutions, you know, and, and, and from a marketing standpoint, you know, everything that you read is all about, uh, you know, determine someone's this, determine you know what what someone's pain is, or you know drive them toward pleasure and that kind of thing. And 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 I would always kind of think of what information do we have, you know that uh, that that could that could accomplish you know those those results. And 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 I say results because that was that's essentially the answer. You know when when I when I met Matt, you know he was he was so results focused, which of course every business you know wants wants you know amazing results, and 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 that's what we focus on, of course, internally. But I I, I found myself too many times sharing information that is man, you can get that on Google, you can get that on YouTube, you can get you know you can get real information and fake information wherever you want, right? <laughs> um, but that's not that's not necessarily what 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 everyone's looking for. Right. You know, they want to know, gosh, you know, if if I if I use this business or if I use this service or if I chew this gum, you know, is it going to make my breath smell good? Is this soap going to make my, uh, you know, not make me stink anymore? That kind of thing. It's those it's those results. Uh, it's those results that that really help drive that conversation and 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 drive that relationship between you know, you as a business owner and, and your customer. And, and, and I'll tell you this, guy, this guy right here, I'm pointing at Matt, if anybody's just listening, um, was, was probably the, the, the biggest uh, influencer, you know, for, for me in, in that area. Awesome. Yeah. And, and I'll give a, I'll give kudos to Ben to begin with. There's, there's a couple of people that really have made a, a huge difference, but you know, giving kudos to Ben to, to start with is, you know, uh, so, so many times, you know, being results focused like that, wow, so many times I knew what people needed. And man, Tim, you know this from coaching, it, you know, so many times what they need, you have to get them what they want so that they can feel comfortable doing yes. what they need. Yes. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so, uh, and so, you know, Ben's really good at that. Ben, Ben really understands that part of that. So that was, that was a huge help for, for us, right? It wasn't just about me being able to listen to somebody for 30 seconds in their business that they've been building a real estate business. They've been building for 10 years ago. Okay. Here's the three things that you need to do. And why, and they're like, no, you don't understand. And I'm like, I do understand. But, <laughs> but, but Ben was really good at saying, well, Matt, you know, the reason why they're not hearing what they need is because you, they don't know that you've listened to what they want. Right. And, uh, and so that was, a uh, that was really helpful. My wife is just right. I've, I've always worked with, I've always worked with my, with my wife and, and she is as, about a straight shooter as you can, as you can run into. Right. And, uh, and she is all about, uh, she's just like me. She's all about results and, and everything. We don't always see eye, things eye to eye, but absolutely. She keeps me grounded in, in an incredible way that, that is, that is super helpful. Uh, you know, early on in, in, in my career, you know, I, I taught school, and the principal that I taught school with, I did it on a contract basis. And the principal that I taught school with uh, was was just an incredible, absolutely incredible person. And she was very business minded, but helped me understand that being business minded didn't mean that you couldn't be compassionate. 
Because a lot of times, you know, I grew up in the 80s, right? And so in the 80s, it was kind of like either you were a shrewd business person with no compassion or you were a too compassionate person that couldn't earn a living, right? That's just what, <laughs> what people in society taught you. And, uh, and, and she, was, she was both of those, right? She ran the school extremely efficiently and she was a super, uh, you know, a super empathetic and compassionate person that showed me that you could, that you could have the balance between the, two, between the two of those. You know, I've worked with other broker owners of, of large organizations that always gave me the chance, you know, to uh, to be able to grow, which was which was huge. And uh, and you know, I think that's something that's sometimes missed with uh, with real estate brokerages. If you're not really connected with the broker, you're not really connected with the owner, and, or if they really don't have what's best in mind for you, if it really is just about the dollars for them. There, there's a loss in support that you get and, and you go out in your business and whether you know it or not, you go other places trying to find it. I think that's why a lot of people leave one brokerage and go to another brokerage. You know, they say that they want a certain commission split. They say that they want a certain financial uh, a benefit, right? And then they get there and they realize what they gave up to get that. And, and then they go out and start searching and paying in other places and spending all this time to find that connection with somebody that they could have had had they had a broker relationship that was truly around, uh, around business. Now, some people would rather be in that situation where they're alone and reach out and, and talk to and connect with their coach or talk to and connect with a mentor. And, and I love that. If that's, their, if, if that's what they want to do, that's absolutely what they should do. But what I don't like is I don't like seeing people search for that solution and not realize that that's really what they're looking for. Because if they're if they're lost, they're going to spend a lot of time, effort, energy, and resources on trying to find something that was actually there in front of them, but they were just looking at it the wrong way. And you're a coach. I'd love to hear your I'd love to hear your your opinion on that. Mike. Did I did I fall off the horse on that, or is that something that's that's spot on? Yeah, no, absolutely. Right. We everybody has. Um, a need to grow and develop, but we all have different ways or preferences of how we get there. So to your point, like keeping, keeping an open mind to, you know, some people are going to prefer a video, right? Or one-on-one -on -one, or in a group setting or, you know, reading a book. And so I, 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 every week with my clients, I challenge them that what is your personal growth plan right? and do it in a way that fits your learning style, right? We, we use the, the VAK, Right, the visual auditory, um, yes, kinesthetic, sir. right? You know, so if if you're a hands-on learner, then let's get you in, you know, learning in a in a group setting where it's interactive. If you're a visual learner, watch a video. If you're an auditory learner, listen to a podcast. Right, right? make sure that you're not um, not investing in your learning just because you haven't found the the right medium for you. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's so good. So, um, Dr. Ben. Uh, we heard a, a few other um, examples of people in Matt's life. Who are some folks that uh, has, have helped you along the way in terms of your own personal growth and development, uh, as well as you know helping the business that you'd like to uh, give a shout out to today? Gosh, let me get my Santa's list out. <laughs> um, you know, uh, of, uh, of course, I'll, of course, I'll start with my wife. You know, I definitely wouldn't uh, definitely wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for her. Um, you know, she, she keeps me very grounded. I'm one of those guys that I can, I can live at 30,000 feet, you know, all, all day long. And she's like, well, remember we, we got to eat dinner this evening. <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, I call her the CFO of our, of our family. Cause you know, she, she just takes care of all those things that, man, I just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have any, any des desire to take care of. Yeah. And then, you know, as far as, as far as, you know, a mother, a mother to, to my children, she's absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, on top of that, you know, I gotta, I gotta thank both of both of my parents and, uh, you know, they, they very much stressed education, um, with me and learning from a, from a very young age. Um, and I think that, you know, probably my, my favorite thing that, 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 that sparked from that was my, my, my we'll say my my love of reading my love of books and uh and then that has progressed into my my speed of my speed of being able to consume them um uh, <laughs> because that's just that's one thing you know matt knows you know if i've got a backpack and it weighs a million pounds and it's, it only has one computer in it a pen 
and like 17 books that I just I keep with me all, all the time. Right. Um, you know, I, I had a, a business partner, his name Jason, um, who, ab- you know, absolutely, you know, I learned a lot from him. And I'm super grateful for the, the relationship that I had there. Um, gosh, the, the, the first job, well, I'll say real job, I had summer jobs, of course, that I ever had. Um, I, was, I was an associate, you know, to another chiropractor and I learned a lot of life lessons you know, just from, you know, because they don't teach you how to be a business person in chiropractic school. They say, here's the central nervous system, you know, go get them, Tiger. And, uh, and so, you know, I learned, I learned a tremendous amount of just, you know, how to, how to run a business uh, from a system standpoint and, uh, and, you know, and how to, how to, how to treat all the people that, that you, uh, that, that work with you and, and for you every single day. So I'm super grateful for that. But, uh, you know, on top of that, I've met, you know, so many people through our podcast. Mm-hmm. When I was, you know, when I was an agent, uh, Chris Stewart, who at the time was uh, CEO of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. Uh, now he's the president uh, of, of Place, which is another real, uh, real estate company. You know, I was able to, to ask him, hey, would you mind just, you know, I met him at a speaking event. He was speaking as I went up to him. I said, would you mind just, you know, getting on a call with me and kind of being like a mentor to me? And, you know, he was, he was always so gracious and, and, and grateful uh, or not grateful, but um, open to giving me, you know, his time. And to, to this day, um, I could send him a text or, or, or give him a call and I know he's going to answer. And, and so, you know, those types of relationships and I can just go on and on with, with, with different people like that. Uh, I'm just so grateful for uh, Bob Berg, you know, he's another one of the authors of the Go-Giver. Uh, I, I talk to him on LinkedIn all the time. And, and he's, you know, uh, gotten, us, gotten us in touch with so many people like Frank Agin and, right. and, and, and then, you know, and, and just, as many, just as much as the people who um, have, helped, have helped myself or, or Matt in business, it's, it's, just, it's just as rewarding and just as, as, um, just as amazing for those people that, you know, we've been able to pass that information to, right? There, there are several um, coaching clients that he has or people that I talk with, you know, about, you know, uh, helping them with their business on, on, on a regular basis that, yes, I'm there and I'm, I'm sharing, here's, here's my insight. Here's what I would do in that situation, that kind of thing. But I've never had one of those calls where they didn't teach me something, where they didn't teach me something as well or spark an idea that I was like, well, I never thought about that. You should, you should do this. So, um, again, it's, uh, Tim is a great, ex- Tim is a great example of this, right. you know, here, here we are, and we're, we're on a, we're on a podcast We're we're sharing our information, um, you know, to, to his, to his audience that again, we, we would have, you know, no access to that audience. If Tim wasn't like, man, I really enjoyed what you guys are doing. Let's, uh, let's, 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 let's share this right. and let's show people that, gosh, you know, you, you don't have to do it alone, nor can you. You mentioned that the, the chiropractic school, it, it's amazing to me that um, and I, I talk about this a lot. The school system teaches us how to be employees, right? Doesn't okay. teach us how to be business owners. And then for those of us who have gone out on our own, there's this humongous learning curve of, oh, there's like a thousand hats I have to wear as a business owner that I was completely ill-prepared to, to take right. on. Yeah. yeah, I remember my first day um, that I opened my chiropractic practice, that where I was the owner. And I remember sitting there, you know, and I obviously had signed a lease for a commercial space, that kind of thing. And I looked around, you know, no one was there. And I was like, what, what did I get myself? What did I get myself into? Um, obviously, you know, obviously it grew. So that was, you know, that was great. But uh, yeah, it was, it's, 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 it's interesting. Business is very interesting, dynamic, ever changing. And I think that's what, you know, I know that's at least what I love. I love about it. every single day is different. Awesome. So Matt, as we think about the next three to five years, what are the biggest challenges you see that uh, the business is going to face in achieving your goals? And who are the type of people you're going to need to overcome those challenges? Yeah. So, uh, so there, there is a lot of drive towards, uh, you know, Ben said earlier in the, in the conversation, you know, we're, we're relationship driven with, with what we do in our, in our business, right? 
but there's a lot of noise in the market. There's a lot of distractions in the market that AI and technology is just going to take over and people are going to be right worthless or whatever it is. <laughs> right. They're just, they're just going to be a wallet that automatically opens whenever. <laughs> and, and so, you know, we don't, we don't believe that sales is a, is a numbers game. Okay. We believe that sales is a relationship game, but the first rule is numbers. Right. right? And so, and so that big picture, that's how we, that's how we look at that. So, uh, so that doesn't mean that, and, and this is important, and this is what I think the big thing happening is that there are going to be things that certainly impact technology and AI and all that kind of stuff are certainly going to impact how things grow and how they change and, and all of that. Or nobody's arguing that as far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned. How that fits into day-to-day -day business is going to be dynamic meaning that we're going to have to pay really close attention to what's happening. We're going to have to keep an eye on what's coming down the road. We're going to have to make adjustments along the way. We're going to have to say, this is great. It's going to help us this way. This is not great. It sucks. It needs to get the hell out of our business. All of that we're going to have to figure out as we go along the, along the way. And so I think that's going to be the biggest change. I think there's going to be a very rapid change with all of that. And, uh, and so businesses that are just, you know, looking down and looking at their sales and ignoring everything else, I think those are the ones that are that are at risk, the ones that are not being intentional with how this new technology and leverage is going to come into play. Those are going to be the ones at risk. We don't plan on getting tripped up by that. But the reality is there's a lot of things that happen in business that we didn't plan on happening <laughs> and, right. we still have to, and we still have to deal with them. So here, so being really, uh, you know, being really, instead of being macro about this, let me be micro about this a little bit. Uh, hopefully this will help the audience. So AI is going to be really important in CRMs. Okay. There's a ton of data out there and the data cannot be compiled, aggregated and filtered through by a person and it be accurate because there's just too much data. Just like there's too much content out there right now. If you go out there and put sales training in YouTube and type that in, right, there are billions of, right, okay. Right. <laughs> so now all of that information has something valuable in it. Well, the same thing is happening with people's purchasing habits. The same thing is happening with people's, uh, you know, uh, personal habits on what they're doing and how they're changing and what generation they're with and all that kind of stuff. That's, in my opinion, that's where AI is going to really make the difference is being able to gather and aggregate that in a way so that you can be more personal in your relationship with people. OK, so that's what I think is going to I think that's going to be a big thing that, that comes down the pike is, is CRMs are going to be much more intelligent. You know, there's there's somebody's going to come along or figure something out that they're going to take AI and put it really deep into the CRM so that the CRM is learning and gathering all of this data and doing things with it so that we can, we can be more connected with people. Because right now, people already expect us to be smarter about what we know about them. Right. right? You, can't just, you can't just pick up the phone and go, hey, I don't know anything about you. I'd like to sell you something. They're like, what? <laughs> Man, I got stuff popping up on Amazon that tells me I need a new pair of shoes because I looked at hiking boots three weeks ago, and you're gonna and you're gonna roll up not knowing anything. About them. <laughs> yeah. People don't want that. That's that's where I think the first big iteration is going to come with artificial learning. It's not just about hey, do you like this color in this house and this room, and do you want an open floor plan? Man, it's gonna be so much more than that. Yeah. It's gonna be where you searching schools and where you searching toilet seats. And Home Depot, does that mean that you want to move, which means, you know, what are your purchasing habits? How long do you normally take before you make a decision? Do you like purchasing online or do you want to pick purchase it online and have it delivered to your house? Do you want to purchase online? Do you want to pick it up? All those things are going to be aggregated in a way that allows us as people that are the ones providing a service or providing the product are going to have to be more intelligent about that. That's what I think is coming, and, and we're trying to be positioned for that as well as we possibly can. But the, but the bottom line is, you know, we're just going to have to, as that stuff evolves, we're going to have to keep our head up, be intentional, and try to move in the right direction. Sorry, I didn't mean to ramble about that. I apologize. Oh, please. No, thank you. Yeah. Ben, what about you? What are your thoughts on the challenges over the next few years? Uh, I mean, I hear... Just one that. That is every day uh, yeah i mean I, I i i can i can agree with everything that he just said you know i look at everything you know from from a marketing standpoint uh yeah so you know you you can go into you know what what does the metaverse look like you know i look at that i look at that stuff all the time uh you know what platforms you know so so i'm always thinking like what platforms seem like they're fizzling out is there any is there any platform that i've 
um, I've never heard of, um, or I've just recently heard of like a, you know, like a sage, a sage spot, um, you know, just kind of a cool platform that, that that's starting to come up. Uh, you know, are, are, are people, are people look are people looking to connect with others, uh, the same way that, that they used to connect, right? Cause it used to be, you know, uh, we would send a letter to someone and then it was, um, you know, let's, let's, let's call them on the telephone and now it's, um, you know, uh, now we're, now we're using face, now we're using FaceTime or we're using zoom and, uh, it used to be okay. You know, I'll post a picture and, uh, you know, am I getting, am I getting, you know, lots of likes, or, or, or whatever and then you know likes have evolved into celebrations and you know, support and you know all these different emo you know and, and and people even you know communicating with emojis alone right just using symbols to communicate so uh i i don't know that it stays in a world of even though we get those you know those those uh, that serotonin release um i don't know if it stays in a world of i, I post content um, and everyone just gives me a thumbs up or likes it or makes a, a, a comment. And, and, and that's, that's, that's what I'm looking for. That's what, that, that, cause I think, I think just as much as people get tired of just, uh, overwhelming amounts of information that I think they're going to get tired of, oh, let me take another picture of this thing and send it and yeah. let's see if somebody likes it. Yeah. And, and and I just I just want to know before everyone else does, you know what 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 that what that thing looks like. And of course, there's uh, just like I said, you know, a, a lot of things being built now by by smarter people than me, uh, and they're not sure if that's what's going to catch on catch on or not. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure either, but I just want you know, for me, the challenge would be keeping keeping your finger on that pulse. Um, LinkedIn's a great example. You know, so many, uh, I know when I was younger, it was like LinkedIn was just for, you know, old, old, people. old people who wanted to, who were either looking for a job or looking to hire somebody. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I connect, I connect with so many people on LinkedIn every single day. And I can see those, I can see those numbers um, of, uh, of how much content is being posted on LinkedIn from an organic standpoint. And and link, LinkedIn is growing. LinkedIn is 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 as a business as a business owner, it's a really cool place to place to be. I don't think you're ever going to see things like uh, I don't think you're ever going to see things like you know here's um, you know my, my my family on vacation at Disney World, you know type <laughs> stuff on LinkedIn. Um, but I think because it's so specific. Uh, you're going to be able to actually network with, you're going to be able actually to network, which is what LinkedIn was for network with people there instead of either just trying to sell them like a bot right? um, or, or post content to, to try and get a, a thumbs up or some kind of uh, yeah, it's a world, feeling. It's the world's water cooler, right? I mean, so, you know, the, uh, uh, I think one of the, one of the big things, I mean, to, to Ben's point is, you know, really quickly, the innovator becomes the incumbent. You know, it used to take a long time for that to happen. Right. Those days are over. Yeah. I mean, that that happens at the same pace at right in part at, at the same pace that, that things are launched, they're becoming irrelevant, right? So uh, you know, you you watch, you know, you hear people talk about Hollywood in the in the old days, right? And there would be one or two movies that would in the you know in the over the weekend right. or right. month would would launch. And now you're getting things on digital streaming at the same time that you're getting them on, uh, you know, at the movie theater and people are making decisions between both of those. And then some things aren't launched that way. And, and the incumbents that for such a long time were a certain way of doing things, that all changes. It all shifts. And, and we don't know which ones are going to shift quickly and which ones aren't going to shift quickly. Right. And so that's a that's a big thing for us is to try to pay attention. And I think any business owner, not just us, but but to pay attention to that, because, you know, you can't just go, OK, that's the incumbent. Let's just kind of stay in line with that line of thinking. Let's do our ad spend on Facebook. Let's make sure that we're, you know, going to, to Instagram because that's where everybody's at. All the millennials are on Instagram, you know, and all those things just aren't true. And they'll and they'll change overnight. And then you're standing there with a plan that that you thought was a great plan that 
put, you know, that took you six months to put together and put in place. And the next morning, it's no good, right? So all of those things are what we have to, all of those things are what we have to, what we have to pay attention to. And that's kind of what we like about, you know, our job is, you know, brokers, they have their head down, right? And, and if they're really good at what they do, they have their head down, they pick up, they look around a little bit and they make some adjustments and then they put their head back down and they pick their head back up and they look around the next yeah. okay? What the way that we look at it is we're standing up the whole time looking around and when they pick their head up, we're saying, hey, look over this way. Yeah. This is part of what you need to pay attention to. Don't make all the adjustments based on that, but don't forget when you pick your head up, we don't want you to miss this over here. That's what we're really, really, really good at. We want to help them make sure that those things are in place that way so that they're not just when they, when they take that minute to pick their head up because they don't have a whole lot of time to do it. When they pick their head up, that they're focused and intentional on the right thing. That's what we that's what we try to do. And so we try to keep up with that, but we know that you know, it's, it's impossible, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. You just have to be a few steps ahead of everyone else. That's right. <laughs> so guys, just uh, last question here. If there was something negative that happened in the business, who's the first person you'd call and what would you want from that person? You want me to go first? Yeah, go first. I'm thinking yeah. about that. One yeah, so, okay. yeah, that's a great, that is... great, great question. Uh, Ghostbusters would be my answers because uh, of who you're going to call, right? But no, seriously, if there's, it, it depends on what the issue is, right? Uh, different issues, you know, we're, we're fortunate enough to have believed in relationships very early on in our business. So we've done a really good job of networking with a, a lot of really smart people. And so if certain things happen, we have the ability of being able to pick our head up uh, from that from that problem, not get overwhelmed with it, going back to the example we gave just a second ago, and reach out to part of our network of people that are like, hey, this is this is what direction you can you can go in that. And I'll use Frank as, a, as an example because we both we both love Frank, right? All three of us love Frank. So um, you know, if if we have an issue with something, we can say, and, and we don't know where to go with that, we would reach out to Frank. Right. And we would say, hey, Frank, do you know anybody that helps out with this? And Frank is going to go, oh, yeah, well, maybe I do. But maybe you need to talk to that person. But there's other problems. Right. If 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 we saw other things happening, you know, like like Ben said, you know, we, we say connected with a, with Chris Stewart. You know, he's just a super brilliant guy and uh, and, you know, has had has had a very successful career in, in a lot of things that are about startup and leveraging information and data. And so if it was something in that arena, absolutely, that's who, that's who we would reach out to. So I think probably for me, the, the big picture answer to your question would be build a network before you need it. Yeah, love it. And, and, and so you're going to have to you're going to have to be valuable to other people for a very long time so that whenever you need that, that when you have that question, those people are excited to help yes. because, because you've led with that value first. I mean, that's, that's the way we look at it. I mean, we don't just, you know, we just don't, we don't just tell our brokers, Hey, you need to do value first when you're, when you're doing whatever you're doing. We, we believe in doing that. So, so a big portion of every one of our days is to reaching out to people we know and going, Hey, is there anything we can do for you? We just thought of you or, you know, we'd love to help. Is there something we can do? So that way later, if there is a time that it comes, we, we don't want to feel like, we're just reaching out, asking for a favor out of the blue. We want to feel like we have a relationship with them that's supported both ways. And if we need their assistance, they, they want to be there for us. Awesome. And I will, of course, uh, I'm going to add, I'm going to add three things. You know, one is ditto to everything Matt said. Um, and another one is I was, I was, I won't say warned, but uh, you said use caution, you know, whenever you get into business with someone and, 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 uh, or form a partnership, right? Because, you know, it, it truly kind of can feel like a marriage sometime, right? Because your business like your baby. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I look back and I've been in business by myself several times. I've been in business, you know, with a partner several times. And, and, and the, uh, every time that I had a partner, it was always great um, to have someone to bounce ideas off of, off of, or, you know, not feel like, man, if something negative did happen in that business, that it was all on your shoulders and, and you didn't really have any, any you know, anyone to maybe like, uh, bet with, yeah, yeah bet, bet that with. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, I, I think, you know, for, for people who are in business, whatever, you know, it doesn't always mean like, Hey, go grab a partner if you don't have one, 
But man, you, you want that person that's so close to kind of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's good to have a great, you know, large network, but you know, find that one person. It's like, man, like we're going to meet every single week, you know, mm -hmm. if we're not partners and we're going to talk about this. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I'm going to be just as much vested in your business as, 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 as you are mine. That's one of the benefits of having a great coach. Right. Um, and then, you know, the, but the last thing that I would add to that, if, if something, you know, uh, I think about this, right. If something negative were to happen uh, in our business today, I would immediately call Tammy, Matt's wife. And I'd be like, I'm going to need you to tell Matt this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you break the news. Uh, let me know how it goes by. <laughs> I, I think I, <laughs> Uh, I think that, that that would be a solid plan, first of all. But, uh, but, but, uh, but secondly, you know, the other thing is, is if something happens, there really is a lot of content out there. Now, there's there's a, a you know, content is constipated. OK, we, we don't need to get a whole lot into a whole lot into that. But there there is so much of it that it doesn't necessarily flow to the right place. OK, so that's the example I'm going to I'm going to use. Now, that's not my verbiage. I heard that in a book and I thought it was absolutely <laughs> fantastic. But but uh, so this is the, the perfect time to use that. So so what you have to be able to do is whenever there's a problem, you have to realize that, that you're not the only one that has ever run into that problem. OK, reach out. So you can start on YouTube. You can start on social media. You can start on uh, podcasts. You can, there's a lot of places that you can go that you could dig into that can, first of all, tell, show you that maybe it's not as bad as what you thought it was. Okay. Sometimes it can be. Okay. But maybe it's not as bad as what you thought it was. Number one. And number two, it gives you a direction to look at. That's why we both love reading. And, and uh, so many times we'll read a book and we'll get halfway through that book. And there's a reference to some other books and we'll go buy that other book. So that we'll finish with this one yeah. so that we can start reading that one. And so it's this, you know, some people look at it like a rabbit hole on Alice in Wonderland. We look at it like a, like just a, a learning pyramid that just keeps is stacked on top of another pyramid on top of another pyramid on top of another pyramid. But, but we're super excited to, to, to be able to do that. Well, when you have a problem, there's so much information out there. If you don't know what you're looking for, it's it's just this horribly big, huge pile of, of information. But as soon as you know what you're looking for, you can dig into that. And whenever you dig into that, you can find what it is. And it's going to take you down that rabbit hole to that next piece of information that's going to help. It's going to actually make sure that you know what the next step is so you know who that person is to reach out Almost every time that you do that, if you don't have a coach, which I think everyone needs a coach, okay? So if you if you don't have a coach, it can point you in the direction of someone else that's going to be able to help. You can listen to three podcasts and go, okay, I hate this person's solution. Yes. This was helpful, but I hate that person's solution. Oh, my gosh, I really gel with this person. Yes. And, and so you going in and digging into that allows you to now connect with that person, see who it is that influences them. And all of a sudden, your problem doesn't seem like it's as big because other people that have experienced it and talk about it the way that you want to learn. And what you mentioned before, the way that you want to learn is is uh, helping you get past that that particular issue. So I, you know, I would think that would be a, a great solution for it. Sorry, to, sorry to ramble on about that too. Appreciate <laughs> the insights, guys. Um, just wrapping up here. It's it's been a pleasure having you on the show today, and thank you so much. from you hearing of uh, your wisdom and your insights. And so, just uh, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much. We're so grateful to, to, to be invited. We, we love it. And, uh, and we're looking forward to, uh, to you, you coming over to our podcast as well and, and, uh, and sharing, some of it, sharing some of your insight with our audience. Fantastic. To everyone who tuned in, thanks for listening to Self Made is a Myth show with your host, Coach Tim Campbell. Be sure to help us spread this movement by liking the show and sharing it on your social media. And to join us, go to bemadtogether.com. All right, folks, that's a wrap. Make sure to pay it forward and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Thanks, guys.